Normally today would be a board game news video, but uh, it turns out for the past two weeks, there's been no news, like none in the tabletop industry, which is shocking and surprising, but sure, whatever. <laughs> um, so instead, I thought it'd be a little more interesting to do something a bit different, and we're going to do a Reddit reply, but we're going to be focusing on the board game subreddit. So it's not going to be Marvel Champions related at all. We're going to be just focusing on the board game subreddit. So um, let's go dive into that right now. And before we do, make sure to hit like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Really appreciate it. Let's jump into it. All right, first one is, should I buy Hostage Negotiator after already playing Final Girl? I recently really got into Final Girl series, which I love for the thematic experience and the relatively simple uh mechanics within it um recently i was watching an old hostage negotiator review video and realized it was once a game i wanted to get uh that's it's made by the same people as final girl is it worth buying hostage negotiate after playing final girl or should i just keep spending my money on final girl modulars it sounds like they don't have everything for final girl yet so i would get everything for final girl first now here's the thing with final girl and hostage negotiator i have both i love both um Hostage Negotiator was kind of like their first attempt at that, for, as far as I know, at the Final Girl system, um, or really Final Girl was an improved upon system. So it'll feel very similar, but Hostage Negotiator is a little more punishing than Final Girl is. Now, Hostage Negotiator, you can play a lot quicker, right? It only takes me about like 20 to 30 minutes to play a game versus Final Girl takes me like closer to an hour, right? Um there's a lot more going on with Final Girl, with like having to move around the pieces and the rule set changes a lot versus uh, Hostage Negotiator, not as much changes, right? It's really kind of deck you're flipping over changes and like some other small things. But generally speaking, it's a simpler game, but it's a harder game because the dice rolls don't work in your favor. For Final Girl, right, you have uh, if a six-sided die. Uh, two are successes. Two are like you can make them a success and two are failures. In Final, or I'm sorry, Hostage Negotiator, that was Final Girl. So Hostage Negotiator, two are successes. One, you can change over uh, to a success and three of them are failures. So like 50% of the time, you will just straight up fail. Uh, so it is a bit harder to play Hostage Negotiator. Now, as far as if you already have all the Final Girl stuff, should you get Hostage Negotiator? If you want a harder version of the series, sure, uh, you could do that. The big thing now uh, that I love about Hostage Negotiator is the career mode where like it strings together like this 20 year long career. It's really cool and fun. I hope they figure out a way to do it for Final Girl. Uh, I would assume they could. It, it shouldn't be too hard for them to figure out. Um, but that is like the one like really huge spot of Hostage Negotiator that Final Girl hasn't done yet. It's just kind of stringing all that together. So uh, if you have all of Final Girl and you want another great solo game that's a bit tougher but plays quicker, Take a look at Hostage Negotiator, but like if you're still trying to get into like more Final Girl stuff, like get get the rest of the Final Girl stuff first. AI Chat GPT opponent, AI opponent for board games. So I've tried out a few games now using Chat GPT four as my opponent. It does pretty well. Similar games and it shows like what it is, whatever. Has anyone else tried this? So I really want to point this out because I think this is actually a really smart idea, um, and it could be part of like the future of solo gaming for like heavier board games where they don't want to come up with a whole solo mode where like you have to randomize it because that's what happens in a lot of board games right now the argument against this is like i play board games so i'm not on a computer right i'm not staring at a computer screen the whole time so like there's a good argument for that but if you want to kind of speed the process instead of like you having to physically randomize something and using chat gpt instead i think it's a pretty cool idea i think it's a pretty neat idea um so it'd be interesting to see if like other people have done stuff like this or if board games take advantage of this because it is good technology to use for something like this or even just like randomizing a board set right there's a lot of games out there that have a lot of rules for just like randomizing a game if this could do it instead uh that'd be pretty cool it'd be pretty sweet board games with focus in storytelling hello community i'm basically looking for suggestions for board games that prioritize visuals and storytelling and then uh, mechanics come later or mechan mechanic oh yeah mechanics i can't i can't read tonight a game that would look uh, at a table for playing for two hours straight and see all your progress in the story. Something like Once Upon a Time board game series, but imagine the cards be connected to each other somehow, uh, forming a flow or a story river that you can assess later and say, this is how I began and this is where we are now. So I've been working on the idea where the game spans on aeons and the game time. And I want to see uh, players to see after one or two sessions, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I don't, I don't have a recommendation in the sense of what they're asking for. But there are board games, good games with storytelling. Um, oh, what's over there? Etherfields, I've talked about before. I really like Etherfields. Uh, it's a little wonky at first, but um, 
it, it it's got a good story to it. Uh, it. It's got a pretty interesting story to it. Uh, at least the first one does. Um, I haven't done all the expansions yet, even though I have them. I have to do them still. So that doesn't really progress. So that, I mean, it's a long story. It's not like a one or two hour thing. Like I mean, that's like a four or five hour thing. But you can do that. Uh, Sleeping Gods, I think, tells a pretty interesting story. It's not laid out. I don't think it's really laid out for you, but it is an interesting story and in what they're what they do on the ship and how you progress and it really just like kind of drops you on the map and just says like go it's an open world have fun it it, it does the open world adventure really well um as far as like telling a story like laid out in front of you like i feel like victorm kind of does that like looking over some of those games over there victorm does a pretty decent job of storytelling um so you know that's up there obviously like arkham horror lord of the rings lcg lord of the rings lcg doesn't change the story but you can still go back and read it and all the fun stuff uh, but arkham horror has a very like a good flow for a story so that's worth checking out i feel like unsettled kind of tries the story a little bit but doesn't like change it that much uh, but those are the ones that come to mind. Let me know because I do love storytelling board games. I do love those long kind of campaign that focus on the story. Like, this is one of the reasons I don't like Gloomhaven. For those that don't know, I don't really care for Gloomhaven because uh, it's like this giant RPG game, right? Where it's supposed to be like a, like a Dungeons and Dragons without the, the DM. And it, I mean, it does it, I guess, but there's not much of a story to it. Like I never feel connected to my character. I don't feel connected to the world or anything going on because it's just it's just, just it focuses on combat that i don't even like the combat that much um so anyway i know that's like one that gets thrown out a lot but i i like the idea of what it should be i just feel like it's not that thing <laughs> um but yeah so i am interested in hearing any larger games like that that you all are into uh because yeah i i love I love story focused games. I think anytime a, a game can tell a great story, I think that's really cool and really neat. And especially if you could do it in bright, bite sized chunks, like two hours like that would be pretty sweet if you could like do an entire story or like most of a story. Uh, but I don't know if a game really exists like that. All right. So this one's actually not really for me to answer. I'll, I'll answer a little bit. But what do you like most about board game, YouTube channels, and videos? I watch a fair amount of playthroughs, reviews, how to's. I'm wondering where to start. I'm wondering if I were to start a channel, what need or want could I help fill? get to that in a second what do you like most about board game youtube channels or videos what kind of channels do we want to see if anyone's looking to make a board game channel do not worry about trying to fill a niche unless it's something completely new right like realistic unless you're you're creating a channel that's no one's ever done then don't worry about it because the reason being is like the idea that oh there's so many board game reviewers out there and that, that like why should i add my voice to it because your voice is unique because your voice is different your perspective is different your perspective is unique you don't, the way you tell a story will always be unique so don't ever let like the the notion that because there is so many board game reviewers out there that you don't have something to offer you probably do um it might take a while to find your voice and find your niche but don't don't stop there now, what I will say is actually, I, I don't like board game reviewers. I, I know I just gave like advice that you should just go for it, but don't listen to me because I'm in the minority of people that like don't like board game review channels. Um, they're not for me. I just, I just, I think the vast majority, the, almost all of them are way too inconsistent for my taste. Um, they don't really set with a strict like regimen of, of reviewing. So I just don't really trust their opinions um and that's what reviews are right it's just a bunch of opinions so but that's fine um so as far as like channels that i really like and that i enjoy um again i, I don't I'm not big into previews or reviews or anything like that and that is the majority of channels out there i want to watch people actually like interact like this or play games or um you know talk about different topics so like for me a lot of the board game community for me is over on Twitch, uh, which by the way, if you're not over on my channel, twitch.tv backslash d20 woodworking, you should join and be there for sure. Um, but you know, we, we follow different channels uh, on Twitch. I mean, obviously Nelson all over, we follow his channel on Twitch. He does a great job with everything. Bonzinator, who my, my Twitch uh, chat has rated a few times, does some great stuff. You can just go to the board game section and you'll find some stuff. And it's cool. It's cool to like hang out with people as they play games and go through things on the YouTube side, Rob, Rob's gaming table, I think it is. Yeah, Rob's gaming table. Uh, he does good playthroughs. Um, Kan Kanjay Studios. Kan I think that I think that's the name. I apologize if I got it wrong, but he does some playthroughs that are really good and interesting. Uh, but as far as like channels that do 
discussions. There's not a ton of them. Um, I think the one that isn't terrible is the king of average or the king above average or king. I think it's like the king of average or something or the average king or something like that. I don't, I don't remember his channel. He sometimes goes on to like uh, talk about some interesting stuff in the industry and he tries to come out with a lot of videos. So some of them are kind of misses for me. But generally speaking, he does a good job of just like having the conversation like of just talking about what's on in the industry. Um, there used to be some other channels that I'm not going to name because I don't really like them anymore. Um, that used to do stuff like that and just had conversations, but they've, they've drifted from that. And I get it. It's very, very weird to to kind of create that type of content, create this type of content. Um, it's kind of a weird niche that doesn't get as many views as other things would. So anyway, let me know what channels you really like, right? Especially playthrough channels or discussion channels. I think those fascinate me the most. Um, that, and if there was something else that was out, something that you wish that was out though that wasn't. Right, because maybe someone will read that and like they'll be inspired to start creating content for that niche because that'd be pretty cool. What was your most memorable moment playing board games? I'm sure some people have some great stories. We love to hear them. Um, this is interesting. So I have I have a several different like rough ones. Um, so for example, I remember the first time we played like a modern day board game, which was um the Dungeons and Dragons one, Lords of Water Deep. Right. The first time playing through that, we were just like, oh my God, this is so great. Like this is such a great experience. You know, uh, my girlfriend, which now my wife, at the time we were playing with my friends, and then they were, I think they were just married or getting married. I don't know. But it was like the first time we all played together. It was the first time I really dived into like modern board game, except for like Catan. I think I played that in college, and that I don't really count that as much because it was kind of like we casually played. I think we played wrong. But that game, Lords of Water Deep, was what we really kind of focused focused on um and then we play i mean i played board games as a kid but not like modern day games right so that was a, a very memorable experience that sticks in my mind um i will say that the the first game we play where you altered the board state like permanently um whatever that's called i can't remember now uh was charter stone right i'm not a big fan of stone Meyer games uh, some of that stuff is all right but like that was the first time like you put stickers on things and like you'd like color in things on the card. Like I remember the stress for that. And I was just like, oh my God, this is like so much. But it was like really kind of cool how it transcended that. Um, I remember playing my first game with Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones is one of my favorite games of all time. And I remember playing Undertow the very first time and being blown away with like how this worked. I thought it was amazing. The first time playing Lord of the Rings LCG. Um, that was another one that really blow, blew my mind. Um going through it and like feeling like I was in the world. Like it was just so cool and how it worked. So I think that was pretty neat. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I think those are the big ones that stand out. I can't think of too many more, um, but there's like other small things, I guess, but like moments. Like I remember we, when we played King's Dilemma for the first time, that was a really great experience. Uh, that was, that was some of the most fun we had playing board games. Um, so anyway, there's like certain things like that with, with um memories and then also past that like i still remember like my first stream well i remember the like the rough idea of my first stream i know we played lord of the rings i don't remember exactly what we did um but i remember the stress with that of like the first time going live and, and whatever i remember recording my very first video on youtube and like what the game was to this day um so like which which I'm pretty sure is Wasp. Actually, well, no, I recorded two at the same time. One was Wasp and one was doing Star-Lord, um, showing how he can beat um, Ronin in like three turns or whatever. Um, those were like the first two. So I don't remember which one went first uploaded, but I think Wasp was actually, or I think Star-Lord was the first game I actually played, but I don't know which one I uploaded first. But anyway, regardless, like I remember like doing stuff like that. I remember like hitting certain milestones in this community and all that fun stuff. So um, all that stuff I kind of remember, which is really cool. It's really neat. Um, and hopefully there'll be more memories here, but let me know your board game memories. I'm, I'm definitely interested in hearing them. Hey, really quick. We're about at the halfway point of the video. Most people don't even get this far. I don't know if you know that, but most people don't even get this far in the video. Uh, so if you have, do me a huge favor. Down below is the link to the Discord. Come hang out with us, right? We have a great time in the Discord. It's my personal Discord. We just we just talk board games, video games, pop culture, whatever else. It's just a good time. You know, it's a lot of fun to hang out. The other thing I want to talk about really fast is uh, my Patreon. If you have not, if you, maybe you didn't know I had a Patreon, if you wanted to support me, but you didn't want to do it through YouTube or Twitch or whatever, you could do it through Patreon if you so choose. There's sometimes free videos and stuff on there. So just, you can hit the button for the free 
like category um so you could do that too if you would really like to uh but go check it out the link's down below all those links are down below go check them all out really appreciate it all right back to right reply how do you make your favorite board game sound fun uh problem i constantly run into with talking non-board gamers is how to describe board games uh you enjoy without sounding like an absolute snooze fest uh for example they love Azul, but explaining it, designing your own tapestry of color tiles seems to make people's eyes glaze over disinterest. What I would do is I would, I would, I would, I would not talk about the theme of what the game is because, like, theme of board games only relates to us. I feel like as board gamers and not to the outside world. What I would equate most things to, like with Azul, and I haven't played Azul in a long time, um, but Azul should be more focused on it's a strategy tile placement game, right? Like. People understand strategy. They understand tile placement. So, like, make it related to that. For example, like, Marvel Champions being, like, a superhero. I really, really talk about, like, oh, you're, like, trying to be, like, your favorite superhero or whatever. Like, I, I mean, you could do that with Marvel Champions and, and try to argue it that way. But anyway, like, card game like that, I would focus on, like, you no, know, it's a strategy deck building game, right? Or, de yeah, deck builder or deck construction game, sorry. Strategy deck construction game. And you're trying to get the best cards to deal damage to defeat the villain. Right, like I wouldn't get into theme as much, even if it's a theme heavy game, right? Same with Too Many Bones, where I'd be like, ah, oh, it's a game where you can start chucking dice and even if you like fail, um, you can still do well, um, but you know, it, it's a way to do damage and you progress through like a story, like an RPG, like a video game, right? Like always relate it to things that your audience would understand. Don't relate it to things that they wouldn't understand. And a lot of like board game, especially abstract uh, board games that have abstract themes, it's really hard to relate to. So that's my... My strategy is just boil it down to its simplest terms and make it very relatable to somebody who has never played a board game. Even if they have played a board game, pretend like they never have. All right, what's the rarest game you own? There's this uh, Mechs and Minions, which is a good one to own. Um, so I don't know if this is really that rare, but one of the games I own is an Uwe Rosenberg game um, at the Gates of Loyang, which I didn't realize is like apparently really hard to find right now. And that maybe it'll come back in the print and it'll be easier. But I think TCG, who originally published it, like went out of business. So I think that's why it's hard to find. I'm supposed to be selling it to somebody like for dirt cheap because I just don't care. Um, and I don't even know where the game is. I have to find it. I feel bad. But I guess that's the rarest game I own. I really don't own that many rare things. The only thing I would say, and it's not rare in the sense that like other people would be interested in it, but I have a, a chess board because I love chess. Chess is my absolute favorite game of all time. Uh, but I have a chess board and it's made of really nice marble. It's from Mexico. Um, and to me, it's it's like one of a kind because I don't know if you could ever really find it again because uh, the pieces are just like, they're, they're so well like tumbled and done nicely and, and polished and all that fun stuff. Like they're really, really nice. So that was probably my rarest one because I don't know how easily you'd be able to get that chess board. But anyone can get like a chess board, just not that one. <laughs> All right, is this a good selection of games for new friends? Okay, first of all, over here, they have legendary uh, encounters. I want to know how to get the alien legendary game. This is, I've been, I'm looking for this, okay? Because I really want to play this. Also, I do not recommend Spirit Island for a new gamer. Um, it is very, very tough. Um, very great game. It's an amazing game, but it's very, very tough. Uh, crew is good. Uh, and most of these other ones I haven't played. Is that embarrassing as a content creator? Should I have played more of these games? Um, also, I like to look at people's shelves and see what they have going on. A lot of Terraforming Mars, uh, a lot of TI, geez. Uh, Ankh, which is another game that I never really linked, but, you know, whatever. Um, Obsession is up here, and I really want to, where is it? They're, oh, Brass. I like Brasses. They're good. Um, Arc Nova. And the, uh, okay, Gallerist. Gallerist is a really good game. Um I know, I know we've like missed the point of what this whole thing was, but I don't really care. But Obsession is a game I really want to play. I need to talk to the publisher because I think this would be like really fun to play um, on stream because it's supposed to be really good. So, and anyway, Wingspan, ugh. Um, Wingspan's fine. Root, I don't like. Heat was okay. King's Dilemma, great game. Absolutely fantastic game. Uh, that looks like Mage Knight right there in the corner. I know that box. Gloomhaven and the Gloomhaven. Frosthaven. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, now it's already highlighted. So, um, but anyway, I was just looking through their stuff. It's interesting to look through what people have. Rising Sun, Game of Thrones, the board game. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know what those are. Uh, Twilight Struggle, good game, but tough to play. Uh, and Nemesis, and then Dune. Dune, I need to play. Dune, I feel like I would, I would like, but I have no idea. But anyway, so as far as what their actual question is, 
Good for stars? Yeah, some of these aren't bad. I think Nemesis would be a good game to start with people. Uh, but the other ones I don't really know. Crew is a really good game to start with people. Uh, but let me know your your suggestions. What's 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 like the best board games for like new friends that are like easy where you won't argue with each other? Because that's why like Spirit Island thing is bad. Not only that's hard, but like you'll get upset with each other. Um, so that's why I wouldn't recommend that one. Favorite board game extravaganzas. Board games have really started to push their production values these days. Kickstarters come with all sorts of aesthetic upgrades and I'm all for it. Are, are, they sound like me like five years ago. Are the uh, Fractured Sky both feature pre-painted pieces that connected with magnets. Dwellings of Eldervale has sound effect bases for its minis. <sighs> Side note, Dwellings of Eldervale was one of the most overrated games I've ever played in my entire life. It was not good. I sold that game so fast. It was just, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe how overrated that game is, but that's beside the point. Uh, what other top upgrades have you seen? Which uh, upgrades are your favorite? Parcel of Sundrop is interesting. Um, so my favorite upgrades, like if you're talking general board games, organizer trays are absolutely up there. Pre-painted minis would be up there because I'm really bad at painting and I don't really want to take the time to learn. Uh, so that's up there. Sleeves are big. I know that's not like a big thing, but for me it is. Uh, play mats, neoprene mats are huge. And replacing anything that's cardboard with something that's acrylic or like something nicer uh, is a big upgrade for me. So most of the time, you can take minis out of games. I don't really care. That's fine. The nicest upgrade I've ever seen in my entire life is actually in Burn Cycle. They have brass miniatures, right? So they're minis, but made out of brass. And they're magnetic to the chips. But the brass part's really cool. And they're, like, hefty. You can If you chuck that at somebody, you, you would do some damage. But uh, it's probably the best upgrade I've seen so far. All right, what is the right way and wrong way to store board games? Um, horizontally, let me think about this. The right way. Obviously or vertically the wrong way they aren't books they're being sarcastic um actually i do kind of agree with them i don't like storing games vertically like there's very few games i do it for because i don't care about the games per se but i feel like all the pieces fall down and then like everything gets like jumbled up and messed up i like it horizontally but i will say the only wrong way to store them really is horizontally upside down that's, that's probably the wrong way don't probably don't do that but which do you store vertically or horizontally well, hopefully you enjoyed this Reddit reply on a Monday since there's no news in the board game space, but that's totally fine. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff down below. And if you want to see the actual Reddit reply from last week, it's right here. This talks about Fantasy Flight Games actually did something right. No, it doesn't have to do with the promo cards, but something else. Go check it out, and I'll see you all next time.